Welcome back. I'm now joined by Keller Kubero with Doling Law. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about post-accident basics. Yeah, I, I, um, I felt it was important to talk to viewers today about, uh, I don't know, some of you may think it's common sense, but you'd be surprised how many times I, I meet with people following an accident and you know, I'm like, hey, do you have this or did you do this? And, you know, the answer is often, right. too often, the answer is no. So here's just a couple of uh, things you may want to uh, do if you're ever in a situation following an accident, okay? Mm -hmm. So number one, guys, safety first. Um, we want to make sure you guys are safe. If, uh, if, you're, if your vehicle's in the middle of the roadway, uh, it could be an obstruction to, to, to traffic. And, and if it's dangerous, you know, and you can move the vehicle, that's fine. But ideally, you know, you'd want to keep the vehicles where they are so mm -hmm. that when, when uh, emergency crews arise, they can take measurements, uh, make sure they get all the data that they need in order to accurately uh, portray the accident on the accident report. Okay. But uh, if you can get out of the vehicle, you know, if you're in that situation, and uh, your injuries aren't so significant that you can safely remove yourself from the vehicle, that'd probably be a good idea. But if, if, if you're unsure, the best thing is just to stay in the vehicle and wait for emergency crews to arrive. Okay. So on that topic, obviously you wanna make sure that emergency crews are on the right. way. So <laughs> if nobody has called them, make sure that you do that. Never, ever, ever leave an accident without having the police come out to investigate issue citations, you know, do measure, whatever it is they need to do for that particular s situation. Mm. I've seen it too many times where people leave an accident and they think, oh, it, it wasn't so bad and I can just deal with this later. Bad plan. Yeah. Uh, you want to get that information out there up front. So okay. don't ever leave a, uh, the scene of an accident without getting emergency crews there. Um, if you're safe, if you're healthy enough to get out of the vehicle, start taking pictures um, mm. of, of things that are important. Driver's license um, plates in case somebody tries to take off on you. Mm. Um, get names and numbers of witnesses around you so that, I mean, some of that information, if, if, you know, if liability is contested, let's, you know, I'm assuming that the, the accident was caused by somebody else and you're the accident victim. Mm. If that's true and uh, the insurance carriers decide to contest the accident and contest liability, you want to have those people, uh, that information available. Yeah, you want to back it up. You do want to back it up. And, and sometimes they take off before emergency personnel and, and uh, police officers arrive on scene. Get their names, get their number, take a picture of their license plate, uh, mm -hmm. st stuff like that. Take a picture of the vehicles if you can. Um, insurance cards. Insurance cards, all of, great, great idea. Yeah. Um, all of those things, just gather, you know, try to find your wherewithal. It's, it's a stressful situation, but try to find your wherewithal and think about what's important in that moment mm. um, and, and, and take action a, as you're able to, okay? And then, you know, it's really important that once you get to, um, you know, assuming that your injuries are significant enough to require medical attention, make sure that you're accurately describing your injuries, you're thorough about what, you know, your ailments may be so that they can get you the appropriate care mm. right off the bat. One thing that I see too often that, that bothers me is that first call to the insurance company after an accident oftentimes comes um, when after some medical treatment, good chance you're on some pain pills. Mm. Um, they ask for a recorded statement, you're stuff like that. Space, no, no, I hate that. Yeah. So, okay. you know, they, they'll, they'll tell you, hey, we need a recorded statement so we can open the claim and yada, yeah. yada. Don't give, don't give recorded statements if you're on medication if you're, I mean, you could be suffering from a concussion. That's one possibility. Mm -hmm. That's another possibility. You don't want to give inaccurate information in that circumstance yeah. to an insurance carrier, whether it be your own insurance or the at-fault carrier's insurance. It's, it's never going to uh, benefit you. So mm -hmm. just wait, you know, just say, hey, look, yeah, the, the claim needs to be open. I'm not ready to make a recorded statement and we can deal with that at another time. But I need to pursue these issues right now. Great. So take control of the situation, you know, to the extent that you're able and uh, hold off on that stuff. And if you're concerned about the accident, your damages and all of that stuff, contact someone like me to make sure that um, you're in a good spot, that uh, your claim is being handled appropriately. Okay. Great. Well, wonderful tips to keep in mind if that ever happens. 
Hopefully not. But yeah, thank you so much not. for coming on the show. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll I'm always talking about bad stuff yeah. <laughs> up here, I'm, and I'm really sorry about that, but that's just uh, the nature of what I do. So I just hope some of those tips are helpful, and, and uh, if you are caught in that situation, some things to rely on. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show once again. And we'll have all that information on our web channel as well, westernsubnow.com.